Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic from version 9.2 to 9.3. Now, I wouldn't call this a super significant update, but it is a little bit more significant than what they typically do every month. Typically, you know, they do bug fixes, camera and lens support, and maybe some minor things here and there. There's a little bit more here. Nothing earth shattering, but we're going to go through everything that I think is relatively significant in this video. Now, they've done some improvements uh, to some of the functionality. For example, if you're in grid view in the library module, they've improved the scroll. They've made it smoother. Now, this is hardware dependent, so your results may vary. The other thing they've done is they've improved uh, the ability to search in a collection. So if you're one that has a lot of collections, you should uh, find searching to be much easier and smoother. Now, they've changed the operation of the way the sliders work. Um, in the past, if you took a slider, say exposure, and you started moving it, as you moved it, it would update in real time the image in the viewer the same image down here in the film strip and the image up here in the navigator. What they've done now to improve the way, uh, to improve the, improve the responsiveness of Lightroom, what they've done now when you move this slider, it only updates the image in the viewer. So for example, I'll start moving this down. You can see the image in the viewer is changing, but the image in the film strip and the image up there in the navigator are staying the same until I let go of the left mouse button and those get updated as well. So they've changed that functionality uh, supposedly to help Lightroom be a little more responsive. Now they have some user interface uh, changes as well. Uh, first of all, uh, you may remember if you sync let's say a collection to the cloud, in the past that would be over here on the left. They moved that over on the right and they gave it a little icon there. And this icon will change depending on what status it happens to be in. So if you're actively uploading, you'll have a different icon. If you're downloading, you'll have a different icon and so on. And you could click on it and, you know, get a look at your cloud storage and, and the status there as well. So they've changed that. Also, they've changed the tone curve. Uh, it works pretty much the same way little features changed or added to it. But UI wise, the user interface wise, they've changed it. Now you re may remember by default, it would open up in the point curve. And if you wanted to access this, this is called the parametric curve, but a lot of people just call it the region curve. There'd be a little square in the corner that you would click. Now, instead you have these uh, icons along the top. This icon here is the parametric curve. You click next icon over and this is the point curve then you of course you have the typical red green and blue curves as well so they've changed the ui totally uh, but it operates pretty much the same except for this feature if when you're on the point curve if you click on let's say a point you can make that point active and when you do you'll see input and output down here you could actually move this point by changing the numbers here. You could come in and just actively type in a new number, or you could just hover over it with your mouse. And when you do that, the mouse cursor turns into a scrubby slider. And then you could just click with the left mouse button and drag left or right with the mouse, and you'll actually be dragging that point left or right as well. You could go over to output, do the same thing, go over it. And then when you drag left or right, you're actually pushing that point up and down. So you could do that. Also, they've added some more options when you right click on the curve itself. Now you could reset the channel, reset all channels, copy channel settings, I guess to another image, um, snap to grid, snap um, and uh, show all curves. When you show all curves, it's just showing the red, green and blue curves behind this curve as well. Uh, so, and then when you're in the parametric curve and you right click, you could see that it has some reset options there. So you could reset the regions, reset the splits, and so on. So some different um, options when you right click on the tone curve. 
So that is another uh, UI change or user interface change. Now another one is in the HSL color tab. If you're in the HSL tab, nothing's changed. That's identical. But if you go over to the color tab, they've just changed the cosmetics of it. In the past, I, if I remember right, there were little color rectangles here. Now you have these color circles. It operates exactly the same way. Now, they've added some new features. Um, one of them, I guess, is kind of significant. The other one's not so much. Uh, first of all, they added some new raw default presets. So if we go over here to presets, they're in this default section. And what they do is these presets, they will uh, give you, there's different ones there, and they'll give you a choice of uh, profile to choose from whether or not you want to do lens corrections and noise reduction, and they have different combinations. So uh, you could go to like camera color and lens. So it's going to Adobe color, I'm sorry. So it's doing the Adobe color profile with lens profiles, lens corrections. Adobe color profile, lens profiles, and noise reduction, and so on. Now I think, my opinion is, most often someone would use these default presets when you're importing an image. You know, when you import an image on the right-hand side, you could have it apply a develop preset during import. That's when I think most often someone would use one of these. You were out landscape shoot, shooting, you might want to just have it automatically do the Adobe landscape preset, apply lens profiles, and do noise reduction. And you could choose that profile or choose that preset, uh, and it will do it. So no big deal there. Now, what they've done to is they've given you the ability to create a, an adaptive ISO preset. And what I mean by that, for example, I have this image here. It was shot with an ISO of 400. I have the same scene, but I shot this one with an ISO of 1600. Then I have the same scene, and I shot this one with an ISO of 3200. Now, if I wanted to apply a preset, uh, if I just apply a normal preset and I have, let's say, on that normal preset in the details tab, I have noise reduction at, let's say, 50, that noise reduction of 50 would be applied to all three of these, pre all three of these images. Now, with the, the adaptive ISO capability of creating a preset with adaptive ISO or ISO, when you click on it, now this ISO of 400, and I, I created one, right? It's all it does is do noise reduction. So I click on it and it put luminance noise reduction at 30 for this ISO of 400 image. Now if I go to the ISO of 1600 image and apply that same exact preset, it does luminance noise reduction at 60. Now if I go to this image with ISO of 3200 and click on that adaptive ISO, it does luminance of 90. So it will change the luminance value uh, depending on what the ISO of the image was shot at. Now, <clears throat> to create these presets, it's not um, super easy, uh, meaning it's not just an automatic thing. You need to have two or more images with different ISOs and then create your preset with both of those images, then reference both of those images when you create the preset and then it will be uh, creating an adaptive ISO preset. Now I'll have a video where I demonstrate how to do that. Um, I don't think it's something that most people would probably bother doing, but I'll, I'll create a video demonstrating how to do that. Another new feature is they've enhanced batch exporting. So if I want to export this image here and I go to the export dialog and I want to use more than one preset on the left. So I want to use I want to put this on my imbuffalo.us website. So I could click there, and I want to send this in image to Instagram as well, and I'll click there, and I want it on my personal website as well. So I have this image being exported three different times. When I click on those, you'll notice everything is grayed out now. I can't change anything over there. But if I go over here and click on Batch Export, a new dialog box pops up. With this new bot dialog box, I could give the export of this image that's going to be meant for my imbuffalo.us website, I could choose where that image is going to be saved, the name of it, and so on. My Instagram export of this image, the same thing, where it's going to be saved, and the personal website, that. So you have a little more control when you're 
batch exporting images in Lightroom. Now, the last new feature is probably the most significant new feature. Uh, it is in the local adjustment tools. The local adjustment tools are the graduated filter, radio filter, and brush. And I'll show you it in the brush. It's this thing right here. It's called the hue bar. And now again, it's in the radio filter as well. And it's in the graduated filter as well. And what this hue bar will allow you to do is change the color of something. And you may be saying, well, you could do that right here with this color thing here, uh, color swatch. Well, it's different. And let me show you. So we're going to get a brush. Um, and let's see, we're going to take feathering all the way down. And I'm going to get a brush that's going to color cover about half of a color bar. here. All right. And just so you could see it, I'm going to take exposure all the way down to start with. All right, so I'll click right there once, and then I'll go down to the extreme other end. I'll hold the shift key in and click again. So I drew a straight line and you could see it, all right? Now I'm gonna reset exposure. All right, that, that line I drew is still there. It's just you can't see it because I didn't change any setting. But if I go to the U bar and I just move it, you can see I'm changing the color, totally changing the color. And if you get near a color and you're just kind of trying to dial it in, you could click this little check box and use a fine adjustment and then it, it just will barely move. So you could better dial it in. Also, if you're dialing it in, let's say and you get close and you don't want to click that box, just hold the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have PC option, if you have a Mac and it will check this box as long as you hold that key in. And then when you let go of that key, it unchecks the box. So you could better dial in. Now again, you may be thinking, well, you have this color swatch down here. This is different. If you click on that and I pick a color, let's say right there, you can see it, it just tones the brush stroke, that color. It doesn't really um, change the color of that. So it's different. It doesn't work the same way as the hue bar. So with the hue bar, basically you change the color of something. And um, I, I guess it's a little more significant than anything else that was in this update. I, whether or not anyone's gonna use it, I don't know, but it's there if you need it. Now you may remember a while ago, I did a video demonstrating how to change the color of a person's eyes in Lightroom. And it was a process. You had to use two different brushes. And in the video, I changed the color of this left eye of this woman's to blue. Well, now it's a lot easier. You could use the hue bar to do it. So in this case, I'll turn feathering up and we'll reset exposure again and change the color of her eye, get a bar, I come in here like this so I can come in and change the color of her eye with one brush stroke, whereas before it took two brushes to do it, right? And then I could kind of dial in the color I want, change it to. Try to match it the other one a little bit. So there you go. It's a lot easier to change the color of something now using Lightroom Classic version 9.3. So those are the improvements, the UI changes, and the new features that I think are worth talking about. Again, nothing earth shattering, nothing super significant, but they're there um, now. There's other things, minor things here and there. And I'll have a link in the description below this video to Adobe's website if you wanna look at everything that is new in this version, including the new camera and lens support. Thank you everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.